Welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Joe Johnson. And uh, unfortunately for me this week, we have Ian Witherspoon <laughs> in the studio. Uh, to what talk up? talk about uh, week 10 and the craziness that happened. A lot of close matchups, a lot of fun matchups, actually. Um, but as we do with all of our new guests, Ian, introduce yourself. Give us a little uh, history on your fantasy football prowess how long you've been playing how many chip chips have you won if any give us a little history lesson uh boy when did i start playing probably mm, 2010 11 something in there i guess okay um uh on I, draft day we spotted you carrying a trophy i know around. i should have brought that back <laughs> yeah. uh that was the last time this league was in effect, I believe, mm-hmm. which I can't remember the year. So you won us. this league? That you, what, yeah. yeah, okay. I won it, and the previous year, I believe I lost by like a point to, to Anthony mm. uh, Termina, uh, which I'm is, sure they didn't brag about that. No, that was, that was, uh, it was very easy, you know, <laughs> to be around them at that time. But um, yeah, the, my claim to fame is, is also tied to the, to the Terminas, yeah. um, for those that don't know. We used to have a show here. Still kind of do. We'll be back one <laughs> Sometimes. day. Sometimes. We'll be back one day. Yeah. For some serious sports talk. Yeah. Um, but I think, so I won the Owen TV one. I've won a family league, a couple of various family leagues. Um, I've been in a league where our buy-in is 150 a year. Woo. And I have gotten absolutely smoked in that league since I've been a part of it mm. going on. Nine, ten, eight, nine years probably. Um, but this year, I'm in for I'm in second. That's nice, lost, but I'm in second in that league. I have the most points though. Terrible return on investment. So, yeah, so. awful. Yeah, that's a Just rough awful. one. awful. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, this year, surprisingly, doing okay in the Terramina League. I started off zero and five. Wow. Uh, I think I'm four and six now. It's a 14-team league, Ooh, man. Oh, it's deep. Yeah, it Draft tough day, I wanted to be like, what? I got St. Brown, and then it, that was it. Yeah. It's like, great, now I can get Alvin Kamara, <laughs> you know, who was suspended for the first whatever. Yeah. Like we were talking about earlier, uh, your waiver wire has Hingle McCringleberry on it. Yeah, yeah. That's what the <laughs> the players left are after a 14-team <laughs> snake draft. Yeah. Um, but I'm in four leagues right now. Happy to report I went 4-0 this week. Wow. I also went 4-0 one other time this year. Exact opposite of what I did this week. Did you go 0-3? 0-3 in my leagues after oh, I've God. been I've been pretty good. I've had a couple 3-0 weeks this year. I've had nice. some good luck, but yeah, this past week was not good to me at all. This this there was a weird week yeah. in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I mean, the walk-off kicks alone, but then you have teams like Houston beating Cincy. Yeah. Um, Cleveland beating Cleveland Baltimore. Cleveland beating Baltimore. Buffalo Bu- <laughs> embarrassing themselves in prime time. Yeah, that was rough. Buffalo brutal. Um, yeah, but um, I don't know. It's been a great year. Love, love the NFL. Right. Love diving into it. And that's why we're all here. Yes, sir. Uh, let's get into the uh, the recap of last week. And um, once again, I feel like she's done this a couple weeks in a row now. My wife is uh, leading. The league this week in points for her matchup. And uh, Joe, unfortunately, you're on the other side once again. The good news is uh, over the past few weeks, I've been the game of the week, W-E-A-K. This week, I took part in the game of the week, W-E-E-K, scored the third highest points in the league this week and lost. Yep. Came up empty, unfortunately. Mm. Oh, gotta love that. Yeah, yeah we've, we've all just, been there. I just want to cry. Walk us through the matchup, Joe, since you were a part of it. How, how did it feel? Well, <laughs> the day was going pretty well. It started out like any other day. It's like a <laughs> Any line. other Sunday. <laughs> All right, Keith Morrison. Um, I was getting some nice points from uh, B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs. Uh, they were scoring touchdowns. I drafted both of those gentlemen. Uh, I was forced to start Brock Purdy uh, with Mahomes on a bye, and he had a, a decent game. I, he threw a f- couple of touchdowns, and uh, I was uh, pretty confident there for a while. And then uh, the witching hour happened where 
wins become losses and losses become wins. And Dak Knight rises, started creeping up on me, pulled it within 20. Literally rising. <laughs> pulled within 10 and then passed me with still her Buffalo defense yet to play. Oh. So I was done mm -hmm. and I was heartbroken. I, I had a nice week. I was confident coming in. Thought I was going to get the win and uh, lost, as I've done all season long, lost late in the fourth quarter all season long. In both of my leagues, I've lost by fractions of points. I've lost by one point, two points. Um, but more often than not, I've lost late in either the Sunday night game or the Monday night game. Uh, that's how my season has been going. So it was, it was uh, brutal. I was going to say, a lot of your loss came in very late too because seattle and washington that game was like boring fast. forever and then all in the last like couple minutes people started scoring back and forth yeah so tyler lockett got a touchdown i know trey mcbride got a lot of garbage time well it wasn't really garbage time because they were going for the win but he got a lot of those late catches as well to put him over 130 yards mm. which was crazy and the and fantasy guys were mocking me because uh Earlier this season, I kind of criticized your team for starting two wide receivers from the same team. She starts Lockett and Metcalf. Yep. And uh, both of them, uh, they combined for, what, 39, almost 40 points this week. So mm -hmm. both of them produced. And uh, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm learning from the guru. And uh, that was without Travis Kelsey, by the way, too. Yeah. So, yeah, Marie's team kind of keeps chugging along. Well, the guy uh, who put the the knife in my back was Prescott. He, yeah. he, uh, Dallas. Just, he did in my other league too. Don't worry about man, it. Man, they just had a vendetta uh, against the Giants, and they're so annoying. Point yeah. after they are so touch, annoying. Scoring, mm -hmm. scoring. They get yeah. their butts beat by anybody good, and yeah. then they beat up on homeless teams. Yeah, mm -hmm. it like, just it's didn't so take annoying. Their foot and they ran. Off the they game. ran it up too. Like, yeah, Dak never came out of the game. They're Michigan football. <laughs> That's me. a whole other story. Whoops. <laughs> I did kind of like the uh, red, white, and blue stripe going down the middle of the helmet. I thought that was kind of cool, I even was, though they they looked a little. I hated like it. Kirby the love bug, but I hated it. They do that like once a year. They're trying right? to buy into that America's team thing. I can't stand it. <laughs> yeah, now, every time they say they're America's team, I'm like, I didn't vote for it. Yeah, Joe, I will say, it's probably a good thing that you had San Francisco's defense on your bench. Because yeah, I would have lost by what like one or something, yeah, like point well, four yeah. or something like that. <laughs> Question for you. Also, uh, you're forced to start Purdy. Did you at all look at the waiver wire for anybody else? Did no, you? because Purdy has been outscoring Mahomes almost all season long. So I looked at it as a blessing that Mahomes was on a bye, and I put Purdy in, and he he had uh, three pass TDs and not quite 300 yards. But that's that's a performance you want from your quarterback. My dilemma going forward now is. Purdy or Mahomes? Because Mahomes has underperformed most of this season. Now, well, is that he has a dilemma? no weapons. Is that a dilemma right. for you, Ian? Are you struggling to start Mahomes over Purdy? Uh, no, okay. no, no, no. I'm okay. just making sure I'm not in the, the lonely crew here. I just I keep getting clubbed in the head by yeah. Mahomes. With man. the way the way San Fran would they lose three in a row? Mm -hmm. yeah. Jacksonville's a good team on the road. They got to come out east. Uh, I I would have been on the waiver wire. Really. I, no. I, I maybe still would have started Purdy, depending on what was there. But yeah. Now, your reasoning is why I benched uh, the Niners' defense. I thought Jacksonville was going right. to be competitive, right. and ETN has been blowing up. and uh, So I benched the Niners and, and streamed some defense, and that blew up in my face. Yeah, that, that's, that's a tough one because San Francisco trending down, Jacksonville trending up. Had to come to an end at some point, but... Uh... Life moves on for you, Joe. Luckily, the people below you also lost, so you <laughs> didn't lose any ground in the standings. With the loss, I'm in seventh place. Yeah. Eight is the cutoff, so I'm mm -hmm. my, my chin is just above water. Yeah. The uh, next highest scoring team this week, once again, Malik's last place team, who just keeps climbing. Mm. Five wins in a row, I believe, um, and just it's been Ceedee Lamb for the most part. He is put up historic numbers. He's now the only person ever to put up, what is it, three straight 150-plus games. Mm. Um, with a touch. With a touchdown, yeah. Um, Jamar Chase is getting on track with the Bengals' offense getting on track. Um, and then it's been a rotation between 
like ETN finally had a bad game, which he's been money for most of the season. Yeah. But George surprising. Kittle stepped up this game. And then DeAndre Hopkins, eh, he's had some okay games. Malik's favorite waiver wire pickup that he's had all season, Dustin Hopkins. He's been great for the Cleveland Browns kicking game. He put up 14 points in this one. And then Becky, now having to bench Tua and Tyreek, had to go to Lamar Jackson, who absolutely stunk. Had a down game. He's been up and down all season long. Yeah. Uh, that one, I mean, I, Cleveland's defense, man. There was the one yeah. uh, pick six that was sort of a ricochet, and mm-hmm. you could argue that he threw it high. But when you hit your receiver in the hands and it ends up in the hands of a defender, it's kind of tough to blame the quarterback on that. Yeah. But they've had some tough, some tough drops late in games as well. But uh, they didn't do like they got ahead early and they didn't have to do much. So then they slowed their pace down, and then that's kind of what you're getting out of Lamar these days is like he's like a boom bust quarterback, which you don't really see too often, but he has kind of become that. Yeah, uh, she didn't leave much on the bench, you know, with buys and things like right. that. There's she was the player she started. She was kind of forced to start and. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of her players produce single digits, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Her second highest scoring uh, player was Jason Myers, the kicker for Seattle, with 21. <laughs> so that's just that's just another down week. Uh, Ian, I'm curious of your opinion with Tony Pollard. Like, if you had Tony Pollard on your team, what would you be doing? Joe, in our other league, traded him away for Sam Howell. Yeah, I was. Well, I was. Uh, our, it is more of a quarterback premium, just so you know, but. Yeah, I uh, I just was so frustrated with Pollard. I I was this close to just cutting him, and then uh, my brother in law, my other league, said, uh, "Well, I'll, I'll trade you for him." And I was in desperate need of a quarterback because Cousins had got hurt, and Dobbs wasn't slated to start. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I got burned on that one, and so I uh, I had to drop my Vikings quarterback, and I was desperate need for a quarterback. My backup was Stafford, so I did this trade, and right now I don't regret it. Um, He's Pollard has been a huge, huge disappointment. Mm-hmm. And when you think about the onslaught of points that Dallas put up this weekend and Pollard scored 5.5 points, and that's happened before where, like, mm-hmm. Dallas has put up a ton of points and Pollard's in the single digits. And I, I don't ex- – I can't explain it. I don't know what's going on there. That's, yeah. that's where I'm I, – I just – he doesn't even factor for yeah. me at all. Yeah. But now like, draft him, I don't – I'm not on yeah. Yeah. Pollard. So, like, next day. week for Becky, she's got DeAndre Swift coming back from a bye. Yeah. You'd stick with Joe Mixon and DeAndre Swift and just bench Pollard? So, Swift I like. Mixon is somebody I've avoided for a while now. Yeah. Because because of Burrow and that passing attack. He mm-hmm. can never, I mean. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't seem to get involved in the pass game as much no. as I would like him to. I have him in one of my leagues. Yeah. But. See, I took a chance on Cook from Buffalo this year, mm-hmm. knowing Buffalo never runs the ball. Yeah. Uh, but he's been okay. Yeah. Fumble last night, not great. But um, I kind of lump those those guys into the same yeah. bucket, I guess. Kind of that meddling running back that they get a lot of work, but they don't do a whole lot with it. And I'm I'm going to take him in desperation. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you see that, uh, speaking of Cook, the late game fumble that he had that just bounced right back up into his hands? I did not. He had it. He was... He was so he almost lost two yesterday? Big, yeah, yeah. He was breaking off a big run, which incidentally beat me in my other league. My opponent had Cook. And someone punched it out of his hands, and without breaking stride, it bounced right back up into his hands, and he continued his run. Wow. Yeah. I want to like say that game. he also lost the ball a third time, but he was oh, ruled man. down or something like yeah. that, oh my I gosh. think. Wow. So they gave him a lot of chances. Yeah, yeah. Really. Um, all right, the next matchup, unfortunately. You guys. Ian beat me this week, 127.52 <laughs> to 97. It was just a rough outing for my team. Uh, but that's the end of a six-game winning streak because I started one and two and then won st- six straight to take first place. Dang. And then uh, this brutal loss. But uh, I don't know. Ian, you, you can talk about it. You can have your time in the shine. So I went real charger and heavy. Actually, go ahead. I, sorry to. No, go ahead. <laughs> I forgot. Ian even did somewhat of a slap to the face, and he benched Austin Eckler that's against just, me. That's where I was going, man. I, I yeah. gotta, I gotta ask what your reasoning is for. I can understand Eckler. it, but this is where I have a problem. This is why I do not bet on sports at all, <laughs> because 
I go with my heart way too much when it comes to local teams. So in a lot of my leagues, I have Herbert, I have Eckler. Um, I don't know why I did not factor in Eckler's involvement in the pass game. Yeah. Um, just the way the Lions have shut down running backs this year. Yeah, that was my thought process too. Is, you know, I'm like, I, I, you know, I remember, okay, last year when they played the Giants, thinking, okay, Barkley's going to have a real good game. That was when, to me, they started shutting down running backs. Yeah. I think they have the second best rushing defense in the league. Um, I thought off the bye. I thought friendly environment. I just thought Eckler would not have a good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, he started slow. The whole team did, really, for the Charger, Chargers. And they got they got hot, and it was a great game. But, yeah, that was dumb. That was dumb. I, hey, I'll, was I'll, so tell you, I'll tell you my story because – it happened to me earlier in the season. I do the same thing. I kind of go with my heart. And I love the Ravens as a secondary team for me. It was just one of those teams. I like the logo growing up, whatnot. Love the way Lamar Jackson runs the ball. Exciting to watch. I have him in one of my bigger leagues. And when they played the Lions, I decided to sit Lamar Jackson for Jordan Love. <laughs> because Jordan Love was playing, I don't know, so, like somebody. Denver? It probably was, I think it was Denver. That's what I want to say. And (laughs) Lamar went off and I would have won my league that week uh, just with Lamar Jackson, basically. And what I found out is I should just play those guys no matter what, even if they're playing against the Lions, because then if they go off and the Lions lose, at least my fantasy team did good. I'll still be sad that the Lions lost. Fantasy team wins. If he plays bad, then the Lions win. And then I still feel good. But if I leave them on the bench and the Lions lose, like we learned, then it's like a double loss. Mm -hmm. So I feel like my percentages of having some sort of validation on my You want to hedge. Yeah, Yeah, you want to hedge your bet. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. You know what's interesting is being a lifelong Lions fan and playing fantasy football, in years past, you started all your skill position players against the Lions. You were right. guaranteed points. For sure. Now, people like you are going, mm, do I start Eckler against that Lions it's D? Just I feel like I'm in a right parallel now. universe mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and with the Lions, I guess we can touch on this real quick. It's, it's defensive related, but, you know, they're kind of, I, want, I don't want to say they're full Cowboys, but when they play a lesser team, like when they smoked Atlanta or Carolina mm-hmm. or whatever, that is that is feasting time for that defense. But we've seen, like, what a good quarterback. I'll say one of the top seven in Herbert, mm-hmm. you know, in the league. And the weapons they have, it's – Yeah. That was just – that was just – that was overthinking on my part. It was stupid. Yeah. yeah. It was a shootout. I think, in my opinion, I, th- I thought it was one of the most fun games oh, of the man. NFL season. I want to go back I and like it. scoring. I it don't like awesome. these field goal games. And uh, that was a fun, fun game to watch. Yeah. It was it was, it was, was great. It so always hurts for me. I uh, I played against Amon Ra in two of my leagues this week. <laughs> and uh, it stinks because he's my favorite player yeah. on the Lions by far. And I actually got good luck this year with my draft picks. But in that good luck, I had no chance of getting him on Ra in any of my leagues. Mm. So I don't have him in any of my leagues, ah. and he went off against me in two, and it just kind of hurt a little bit. But. He was my absolute priority. Yeah. I got him in wow. all four of my leagues. Yeah. That, I, I basically said that if I was, like, past pick five, I would have gone for him anywhere. Didn't I read today that uh, with this performance this past weekend, I'm on Ra is up there with Kelvin Johnson for consecutive yeah. – 100-yard receiving games. I think he has three in a row now. Yeah. Plus, and he has really six exciting. on the season, which already, like, ties Calvin with There's something. been one game he hasn't. Yeah. Mm. Gone over 100. Right. The guy's incredible. Yeah. He's oh. a pass-catching machine, and in most leagues, that is, that's points. Yep. Just tons of exactly. Points. He's given you 30 points this week. Yeah. Similar seven. to Joe, I'm glad that none of my bench came down to this game. Uh, I did have a hard time deciding who was going to be my – other wide receiver. I was pretty locked in with Thielen and Tank Dell. I just had to figure Calvin Ridley and Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson has been getting a lot of targets, a lot of looks, but you never know with Zach Wilson at the helm. And I was like, you guys, I thought Jacksonville might have put up a better fight. I thought Calvin Ridley tends to do a little bit better in zone defenses. Um, And the way San Francisco moves their defense around, I thought 
maybe he'd have a look. He still stunk, so he's hitting the bench for a while now. Surprising uh, performance by your favorite tight end, Mark Andrews. Yeah, a dud. Uh, Absolute dud. Tyler Bass, only two points. Defense, one point. Ugh, yep. that's painful. The Saints got the Josh Dobbs experience. Um, the next matchup, this one also kind of hurts a little bit. Uh, Sammy beating up on my brother, 127 <laughs> to 113. Ouch. Uh, basically, Stefan Diggs is a player that I have in one of my leagues. My brother has in one of his leagues. And my wife has in our ESPN league. So we're all connected by Stefan Diggs. And he all connected us with losses last week. Oh, really? Oh, wait, no. My wife did win in ESPN. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, so... Which, by the way, she's now leading in our ESPN league and in this league. Oh, man. So she's having what an animal. one heck of a season. Can I ask you something real quick? Yeah. Uh, we've probably talked on, about this, but do you like ESPN or Yahoo? Yahoo? I think I like Yahoo a little bit better. Really? I don't know exactly why. I don't okay. know if it's just the UI and the way that it looks. Are you on your phone with it mostly or your computer? Yeah. Okay. A, a little bit of both. Okay. Um, but I tend to like Yahoo, and I don't. I don't know exactly why. Joe, you're Yahoo, right? Your team Yahoo. Like well, uh, in ONTV, it's Yahoo. But in the other league that I'm in, it's a website that we pay for called uh, Real Time Sports, and I really like that. It's very clean and easy to use, and you could trash talk each other and stuff. Yeah, like that, that one's so. that one's a weird one. Um, I like it. I like it too. But they have a lot of guys that they have their like college <laughs> player pictures. So it's it's a little weird with the updating, but I think <laughs> between the the two big ones of Yahoo and ESPN, I think I think I like Yahoo a little bit. I hate Yahoo. Really? I hate it. What's the reasoning? I don't know where the heck anything is. Well, mm. on the phone, it's very very cluttered. It's, it, it's so annoying. It's almost like too much information. It's like on the phone. so much crap not related to the league or yeah. whatever fantasy fantasy football. Yeah, yeah. I, don't I know. get that. So, I, I get that aspect. I think I just like there. the. It's a little more clean when you get into the actual lineup thing for me, I guess. I don't One know. thing that has been fun in Yahoo is uh, on game day, uh, Joey Tracy and I, and I wish more of the other teams would take part in this, but we get the chat feature going and we kind of go back and forth and stuff. And that's fun. That makes game day a little bit more fun when uh, we're kind of all going at it on, mm -hmm. on game day. Yeah, I've only seen Sammy chime in once on the chat and it was about... Uh, somebody that he wanted to get rid of or something. Mm -hmm. He was talking about trades. Or he, something. Was, he was offering up somebody for yeah, sale. I think so. <laughs> but uh, Sammy had a huge week from Keenan Allen, who almost saved me in my big league this week, but uh, to no avail. But in this league, huh. he came up huge. And like I said, Jordan just got nothing from Stefan Diggs, which he only needed a, like a pedestrian game from Stefan Diggs to even win this game. But uh, late in the game, Russell Wilson threw a touchdown pass to Javante Williams that basically sealed the deal for Sammy. Yeah. And uh, what a charmed life, man! Sammy came in to the studio on Monday and he was he was confident. And I was like, eh, you know, you're going up against Stephon Diggs, and you know they're playing against the Denver defense. I didn't think that Sertan would be on Stephon Diggs as much as he was because he doesn't always shadow the guys. Um, so that was interesting to me, and he basically locked them down. So when you look at Diggs, man. you look at Sammy's starting lineup, look at all the single digits. I know mm -hmm. Keenan but Allen because of Keenan Allen, he gets the win. Yeah. He, he, he carried everybody on his shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. It was wild. And, uh, Jordan finally found a quarterback. He got Sam Howell. Like he was talking about mm -hmm. Chris Olave kind of got back to being Chris Olave. Ken Walker had a good game and, uh, his main man, Riley Patterson put up 12 points for the lions with that game winning. That is kick. A fascinating kicker to have on your team yeah he well <laughs> lies never use them lies and sick season ticket holder speaking uh, of uh gotta have somebody on his team speaking of how i noticed you flat out dropped one of his receivers yep uh well i told you last week that i had to drop somebody i've got yeah i've got h hand coming back off ir i picked up kyler murray for the bye week um for when joe burrow is or no joe burrow's passes by week it was just in case um so I wanted to have a second quarterback as we got closer to the playoffs. And with Kyler coming back, I was like, well, that's a pretty solid option just in case. So I had to drop somebody, and Tank Dell has been going crazy. Yeah. Dotson. Well, Dotson, I traded for him in my other league because I, I like having a quarterback-wide receiver combo. 
And Dotson had two decent games in a row. Where I think he scored a touchdown in two of his last yep. uh, games. And then yeah, this week, a row. zero, nothing. And I, I heard the announcer at one point say, Howell has completed a pass to something like nine or ten different receivers. And Dotson, who I thought was going to be the next big thing, came up empty. And I'm like, is is he hurt? Is he playing? And then I saw that number one jersey on the field. And I don't – I think I saw him get targeted once. Mm-hmm. But what happened to that relationship between Howell and Dotson – where you're flat out dropping them, and I'm questioning whether I want to start them next week. So, not sure what happened there, but a zero, zero. That's crazy. That's what I said though. Like with with my team, and it's like we've said sometimes it's bad to have too many good players because it makes setting your lineup so much harder. I have Adam Thielen, Garrett Wilson, Tank Dell, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua. None, none of those guys are going to be started I, like I'm not going to start Dotson over any of those guys right right so somebody's got to go a chan's going to move into the when a chan comes back it's going to get even worse because I have Jonathan Taylor Christian McCaffrey and a chan but I still have all those wide receivers so now like my flex position is going to be a mess and I think I think I could have some trouble going down uh the stretch here to be honest <laughs> Well, it's a phrase I like to use. It's an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. And you have all this talent, and you're going to wrestle every week. Who do I start? Who do I sit? And it's always going to be the wrong guy. Mm-hmm. You're, it's always going to be the wrong guy. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Final matchup. We'll just kind of gloss over it real quick because it does involve Drake. I texted <laughs> him multiple times to set his lineup. He didn't do so. Mm. Um, so I think Drake's right. checked out. I yeah. think he's done. Well, he definitely is. He could play the role of a spoiler. I know he beat me. He beat <laughs> Becky. And it's embarrassing that I got beat by someone who just isn't invested in this league. He's checked out. Mm-hmm. He starts guys that are on buys that are hurt. And I lost to him. That yeah. Sucks. Um, Tracy's team did pretty solid. Uh, Jared Goff had a nice game. Brandon Ayuk got a touchdown, kind of saved him a little bit. Montgomery just played like Montgomery, to be honest. Uh, Chuba Hubbard is off her team already <laughs> since this game. Mm. And uh, TJ Hawkinson had a huge game as uh, Josh Dobbs went off. She Man. benched Adams. She yeah. is she is so over Devontae Adams. Mm-hmm. Uh, he scored 14, which is probably the most points he's put up in a few weeks. But uh, it was whoever, all in the first half, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, who would, who would think that? You'd resort to benching Adams because he has just underperformed. Yeah. They're a mess, man. Yeah. yeah. They where, are. where did Aiden O'Connell even come from? I don't even know where that guy's from. Iowa, right? Is he? I believe so. My God. I, I wish Malik was here because I, I could be wrong, but I'm almost positive it's it's Iowa. Well, since An the Iowa uh, quarterback. <laughs> Yikes. Well, since the quarterback change that the Raiders made, they've won two games in a row, which is really shocking. True. Oh, Purdue. Purdue. That's what Purdue. it is. Purdue. She doesn't make it any better, but I was like, uh, I knew it was Purdue around legacy there. over an Iowa quarterback. Yeah, um, I, the th- the crazy thing for me still though with Tra- with Tracy's team, Devin Singletary had 150 rushing yards. He put up 23 points, and then Brian Robinson had 119 receiving yards, which he's not like a receiving back, um, and he got a touchdown, which he had 27 points. And she, Robinson and Adams were on her like ready to cut list like ready to cut ties so she might have some interesting decisions the weirdest thing about drake's team and tracy brought this up multiple times on sunday four quarterbacks and an empty roster spot Mm -hmm. has an empty bench spot but four quarterbacks on his roster he's just collecting them well i have three on 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 one team yeah you have three i do well it's like we said he had cj stroud and then yeah. he also had justin fields who ended up getting hurt daniel jones who ended up getting hurt oh my and then God. so he just never dropped those guys didn't oh. he draft all four of them too uh <laughs> he drafted three of them i believe yeah i think he got stroud fields and daniel jones so then he didn't drop any of them but he picked up josh dobbs so he and ended so up he, with four and he started born who's on ir yeah yeah so the worst part right. about drake's team that I'll have to say. It's not the four quarterbacks and one of them is Daniel Jones? <laughs> no, 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 no. How can it get any worse? The worst part is that he hyped up C.J. Stroud all throughout the draft. Yeah. He was so excited for him. He was right, by the way. Yeah. 
I think he's only played in one week. Wow. Yeah. In the entire league. Yeah. Imagine where he'd be if he just plugged Stroud into the lineup. Even on a especially he, the last even if he left year, him yeah. in a bye, I wouldn't blame him. Yeah. But uh yeah. Why would you be so high on the guy on draft day and then not start him every week? Yeah. Well, oh, well. This is what happens sometimes. Sometimes you invite somebody into a fantasy league and they're just not that into it. So uh it is Hawk, what it is. Uh, Hawkinson, let's talk about Hawkinson for a second. He scored thirty points for Tracy. Yeah. What a performance he had on the field on uh Sunday. He was hurt at one point. I think he went over to the tent, uh, came back out, got knocked around on the field, scored a touchdown. Um, I didn't. We didn't see that kind of effort with the Lions. And he goes over to the Vikings, and he's he's looking amazing out there, like future he's, Hall of Famer. He thought he was too good for us. I guess he thought he was too good. He, you know that there's that phrase. You know, he left it all out on the field. That. Perfectly described Hawkinson on Sunday, man. He he got beat up. I'm sure he had a hard time getting out of bed the next day, but what a performance and puts up 30 fantasy points. That's One impressive. thing I will say is what people have started to talk about is like that is one of the most even trades that we've had in a long time. Like Minnesota got Hawkinson. He's fit in nicely there. We just replaced him with Laporta, who's probably better. Yeah. Um, in my opinion. So a lot better. Yeah. I mean, the guy's a rookie. Yeah. And he's doing things Hawk never did here, man. Right. Never yeah. did here. He provides more as a tight end. Did you see the quote that uh, Laporta had where he said, The Lions have not allowed me to be a rookie? And I that caught my eye. And I'm like, okay, I gotta read this. And he said, I came in hitting the ground running mm -hmm. and they're not handling him with kid gloves he means a lot to this team as a rookie and it's yeah. really impressive that he's he's shouldered that responsibility and he's performing I think that's the fun thing about the Lions too is that like that's what a lot of these guys have been able to do is they've just put them in situations maybe that's the reason Jamison Williams isn't working out right now but uh they definitely give all these young guys opportunities and that's that's kind of the exciting part you know what uh, Williams had to have earned some respect from his teammates when he led the uh, downfield block on the uh, Montgomery. He has uh, respect of the team. Yeah, I don't yeah. know about the coaching staff. Obviously, the fans mm -hmm. know. But people are always bringing him up unprompted. And yeah. Montgomery did the same thing. He said, I got to highlight J-Mo for his yeah. block. That's the second mm -hmm. touchdown run I've had where he's had a key block. Yeah, where you look over and see him running down you know, the I field. You know, I don't – I – I he kind of bugs me a little bit, JMO does, because mm -hmm. okay, you draft a speedster to be a game changer like Tyreek Hill, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to stand Tyreek Hill next to JMO. I don't even need him to race. Yeah. Just look at their bodies. Yeah. One guy clearly lives in the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay. With JMO being out and suspended <laughs> and hurt, and I would think he would he would have, you know, hit the weights a little more look more like an NFL body. I hope I'm just wrong about my disdain for him. I, I did, or, you know, I respected what he did on Sunday. He made a tough catch. I think it was a third down. He scored a touchdown that was called back that shouldn't have been. Mm. The key block, um, I don't know. I don't know. I hope I hope he's getting it because, like you said about the Lions, the coaching staff, the management, Every draft pick that Brad Holmes has made is on this team mm -hmm. or in the organization still. I think with the exception, Jefferson might be on the practice squad, the running back. But, like, I, I don't know. These guys, even, like you said, trading Hawk. Mm -hmm. That looked like they were waving the white flag. It was yeah. one in six. Mm -hmm. He was a top ten pick. He was supposedly one of the top weapons on our team. We mm -hmm. traded him, yep. and we've lost four games in the 19 we played without him or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's insane. Yeah, I think we're we're pretty good without him. Now, I think we we mentioned a week or so ago with the Lions signing uh, Peoples Jones, you got to wonder if that's throwing down the gauntlet with JMO and saying uh, it's now a competition for your job. Yeah, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a notice. Hey, mm -hmm. this train don't stop, right, bro? Yeah. Like, we still got we we're still going. Uh, yeah. But I think that I I like truly these guys don't lie a lot. Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes, they don't. Yeah, they, they don't sugarcoat anything. They don't, and they said this is this is more for Marvin. Mm -hmm. You know, Marvin's gone. Yeah, just to have extra depth. 
So I, I don't know. I, I like it. I, yeah. Thankfully, it's not fantasy where, you know, right. I don't think they're struggling too hard to fill out their uh, their lineup card. Yeah. You know? But if you are struggling to fill out your lineup, there's yeah. plenty of waiver options. <laughs> plenty. <laughs> See That's that segue? Exaggeration. Like we always say, 10-team league, there's always options that you can go for. Um Cole Komet's kind of a surprising one that's actually out there because tight ends you don't see too often. And uh, he's a pretty cu- good tight end. So if anybody needs a tight end, I would suggest Cole Komet. Can I say something real quick? Yeah, go for it. In another league, he was on the waiver wire as well. I needed a tight end because Kittle had a bye. Mm-hmm. I picked up Higby from mm. the Rams yeah, over never, Cole Komet. He never produced. Yeah, he's what struggled was this year. I think? I, <laughs> and Stafford was out. It was when they played the Packers. Yeah. yeah. Without even a host who started for quarterback. Brett Rippin? Yeah. Who's that? So yeah, just, Exactly. Oh, I don't even want to hear the name Cole Komet right now. Because of course he got picked up right after that. Yeah. Well, he's available in our league if you need if you need one. I have no interest in him because yeah. I, I picked up Ferguson, I believe, off the waiver wire, and he's been performing very, very nicely for I me. got Kincaid. Yeah. yeah. From Buffalo. He's been yeah. real good. Yeah. Um outside of that. Running backs, like we said, that's at this point, running backs are impossible to find, basically. Maybe Ty J. Spears. Derrick Henry didn't play a lot last week. Maybe there's a chance there. Um, Antonio Gibson got a late touchdown for Washington, but hopefully you're not in that dire of need. Wide receivers, I, uh, there's plenty. In the running back category, I uh, I put in for a waiver this week. We'll see if I get it tomorrow morning. But uh, Pierce, I, I just can't hold on to Pierce anymore. Mm-hmm. I got to cut him loose. Yeah. And so... Uh, We'll see if the guy that I have on the waiver wire target, uh, I, he, I don't know if he's going to ride my bench for a little while, but uh, I, I just can't deal with Pierce anymore uh, from the Texans. He's he's dead to me. Yeah. the uh, Yeah. Houston's going off, and Pierce is just being left in the dust, it yeah. seems like. So I don't blame you. Other than that, wide receivers, there's plenty. We're at the point of the season where waivers are pretty much through for the most part. Um couple bye weeks left like 13 is like the big big one left mm-hmm. where there's a bunch of big name teams that are on bye um do we have three more regular season? four so four more. The, okay. well including this week so there's week right. 11 12 13 and 14 playoffs start week 15 and we're at the point where if me marie or tracy win this week we're locked into the playoffs mm. obviously not for seeding is it half the team half the teams how many make it eight Eight. Eight. So I, I made it so that almost everybody makes it except their bottom two. So uh, Drake's got a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, he does. Nobody's out of it yet. Um, so as we look at the standings, like I said, Marie, myself, and Tracy are all tied at the top, only differing by points. Um, and then we have Sammy and Ian at six and four, Malik at five and five, Joe at four and six, Becky at three and seven, Jordan at three and seven, and Drake at two and and eight and the scary part right now is like projection wise becky being an eighth seed is terrifying like i say every week if you have to face off against Tua and tyreek you just never know and that's what i reiterated to her today when i was talking that if she just makes the playoffs she's going to be a scary bottom seed for anybody to match up against you gotta check miami's schedule if they're at home pretty much towards the end of the year then you're toast yeah um, so for week 11, I'm playing my brother actually, which I could, like I said, I could lock myself into the playoffs, put him in a really tough spa- uh, spot to make the playoffs. Uh, Marie is playing Malik, which is a, a big rivalry. Actually, they do a lot of trash talking. And then Tracy taking on Becky, Sammy taking on Joe. Yeah, that's going to be a matchup. I uh, I have my roster in place, and I'm still a uh, underdog. But uh, you know, considering the points I put up this past week, if I can just make it to the playoffs, if I can stay in the top eight, mm-hmm. knowing that my team can potentially produce, I'm, I'm just let's just get to the playoffs. So uh, I hope I can get a win this week. I uh, hope I can defy the. Uh, the underdog status, but uh, you will be yeah. without Bijan, and Sammy was without mm. Youngway Koo. Could be a big, <laughs> a big deal. Mm. I don't know. Does he have a secondary kicker? Does he have to pick somebody up? That's I don't know. Just yeah, he'll have to pick somebody. Add and drop when it comes. Uh, so 
let's talk about my quarterback dilemma. Again, I'm looking at Purdy versus Mahomes. Right now, Mahomes is back in the starting lineup against mm-hmm. Billy. Who does Sam Fran have this game? It's a Monday night game. Uh, Sam, Sam Fran has Tampa. Tampa. Fran is Tampa, yeah. So, um, so right now, oh, Mahomes man. is in the starting lineup. He's projected at 2175, while yeah. uh, Purdy, I think, is. Let me look at my bench players. Purdy's projected for 14.57. So, yeah. so Mahomes is in right now. We'll see how it goes. Um, if he has a down game, game, then I'm yeah. I'm done. You're gonna have done. a fun Monday night, yeah, or not so fun Monday night because <laughs> Sammy's got Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown oh, going, wow. playing Patrick Mahomes. Mm. So oh, yeah, I, yeah, that's gonna be fun having those quarterbacks go head to head. You guys should get together, live stream, <laughs> yeah. watching that game. <laughs> so that'll come down to the wire, which is gonna be pretty crazy. Let's all go up to Rio, have a mid uh, <laughs> mid season fantasy meetup. For Monday night football, <laughs> and then Ian, you get the uh, well. I can't say cakewalk because he's he's gotten some people. We'll see who he's going to start this week. <laughs> yeah, maybe he sets his lineup. That's the yeah. mystery. Will he actually set his lineup? Don't call him. We're all set. I think we've reminded him enough at this point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So right now you're projected to win, but you know, with his team, for some reason, you never know what's going to happen. In the uh, days leading up to my matchup with Drake, I made the mistake of saying that I had a bye week that week. <laughs> Yeah, and he almost doubled my points. So. And if anybody knows any of Joe's history, his <laughs> fantasy trash talk has never worked. It out never does in my existence. No, knowing. You should I take said, a vow of silence for the football season. Yeah, just <laughs> retire to your quarters and manage your team silently. I I, I try not to trash talk, but mm-hmm. I actually said this past week. I like my chances, and that was enough to yep. anger the fantasy guys. That's why I was trying to remember what you said, because I know there was a point where you yeah. said something I said, along I those lines. I like my chances, and that was enough. What about say, speaking oh, yeah. negatively? Like, oh, I'm going to get smoked. This Sometimes week. he does pretty good against that. Like, if he – or if, if he bashes, like, his quarterback or something, usually his quarterback will turn it around. Oh, I'll, yeah, like, I I think uh, Tracy did the same thing where I, I threatened to bench someone if they're underperforming, and then they, they turn it around and start yeah. playing well. And I'm it's, like, all right, you, it's that's tough what you got to do. Yeah. But Joe's most famous was in our big league when he drafted Tom Brady. And Stafford. And Matthew Stafford, and he – I quote you said, see you in the championship. <laughs> now, keep in mind, Brady had won the Super Bowl two years before that. Stafford had won the previous year. I had two Super Bowl quarterbacks on my roster, and they both had the worst season of their entire career. Yeah, and I will give Joe the credit. He did win the fantasy league the year prior, so yeah. he was still he was feeling good going into the draft. Yeah, I was arrogant. But. Still hung over. Yeah. Crazy <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. It was the Super Bowl hang. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There you go. I'm gonna try. <laughs> oh man. So yeah. All righty. Week eleven coming down to the wire. Like I said, there's a lot of teams towards the bottom that that could flip flop back and forth. A couple of us at the top trying to secure our playoff spots. But uh, Ian, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Appreciate you having me. Um, hit the waiver wire if if you need to. There's only a couple teams on by. It's the Colts and the Falcons. I don't think there's anybody else. Maybe I'm missing somebody. But yeah, this has been uh, Week Ten recap, and we'll see you guys after Week Eleven. Adios.